page 119, King William's March. On page 118, the reviewing ornaments continued. More ornament. This is the trill. A trill is simply two notes alternating, and they have to be next to each other. That is a, a second. A minor or major second, whichever. And we're talking about notes in the scale. And a C major scale would be using only the white keys, and it would be two notes next to each other. Alternating. usually quickly. They give you various exercises. They have Mozart had a trill exercise. I've never been very good at trills. Hopefully you do a lot better than I do. But the idea is to be able to trill on pretty much any two fingers. Most people will trill on two and three. I like to try and trill on one and three just so I'm not using two adjacent fingers. I might do two and four not easy or three and five I seldom do four and five but those don't work too well or three and four don't work too well but you can get the idea the idea with the trill is simple enough it's got to be even it's got to be controlled speed is not important how fast you trill is not important it's got to be even and controlled and generally, almost always, you will do them rhythmically. So it's like in this piece, in this march, into the second line, you see a half note with a trill. So you're going to trill it. And this book, and I do, a lot of people, well, I'll get to that in a minute. They're, they've written out the notes for the trill up above. It's 16th notes, like so. Some publishers write out the trill, and some composers, when they're picky, they'll write out the trill they want you to do. Some don't do anything. It's up to you to figure out what the trill is. How fast you can trill. If you can't do 16th notes, then you have to do 8th notes. And leave it at that. It's however fast you go. A lot of people on trills, they will start the trill. Let's say I want to trill two notes. I'm going to do a C and a D. They will start the trill on the bottom note, because that's the note shown in the music. Other people will always start the trill on the upper note, or almost always. I don't know. I was taught in college to always start the trill on the upper note. Almost always, I should say. There are exceptions. Almost always start the trill on the upper note, and that's the way I do my trills. A trill, if you listen to the two notes together, doesn't matter what the notes are, here or here, they're dissonance, what we call dissonant. It has an edge to the sound. And some people believe that you start on the main note, because it's the main note, it's the note provided, that's the note we want. The other note is just there for, for ornament. Other people say it's a trill and I want the dissonance to come out. Well, the dissonance comes out a little stronger if you start on the upper note, not the note shown. And there's a difference of opinion. I'm getting a little beyond beginner type stuff here. But just know that on this trill, they're starting on the upper note in the key. We're in the key of D major. The note shown is an E. The next note up would be an F sharp, not an F natural, because we're in the key of D major. And we're doing them rhythmically, the same thing at the bottom. One E and a two E and a one E. And you can end it like that. A lot of people wouldn't end it this way, a trill the way they're showing. They would put more notes in it. They might put a couple more notes in there, so the, the, the E, the 16th note E tied to the dotted 8th note E, they wouldn't, that wouldn't be as long. They would add some more notes in there, and so the E wouldn't be as long. Just do it this way. One E and a two E and a. So if I do the last two measures of the first line, Again, if 
you're going to do these little exercises, do them in both hands. You can do it one hand at a time, doesn't matter. And if you're going to do it hands together, then mirror the hands. It's like over here on Mozart's trill, they start out with 2-1. Well, then here in the left hand, you can use the same notes if you want, but start out with 2-1. So that they're mirroring the hands. And put a little accent on the beat. They show the left hand notes there, but they're starting it here. And that's good exercise eventually, because now the hands are going the same notes, and that's harder than mirroring the hands. It's, 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 it's a hard one. Use a metronome and go slow and put a little accent on the beat. Let the wrist collapse a little bit. Don't get stiff. So on this march, let's just other than the trill, let's cover a few things. In the right hand, right at the beginning, they have you in this position. Three, one, three. Ugh. Because when you look at the second measure, and then here, and now they want you to come down with fourth finger. I don't care for that at all. So here, if I do the first two measures the way they got it, it's this way. Now it's got a note there, non legato, which means separate them. So, and the separating, I mean separate the quarter notes. You don't have to separate the eighth notes so much. But I just don't like this fingering, and I don't like having to move my hand from here to here. It's unnecessary. So I'm going to suggest the fingering for the first two measures is this. In this position, in this chord, so it's a 2 1. And a four, and then a one, four, three, here. So it's this. Because I can go here. You gotta be able to do that anyway. I mean, you're gonna get it in the scales. And so, and then go up. First two measures of the second line are the same as the first two measures of the first line. I'd finger them the same. Going on to the third line. I like their fingering in the second measure. The third line is three, one, two, three. Last line, look at this. Good. Good. It's basically the fingering for a D major scale there in the first two measures. I like that. That's good. The left hand's just got supporting stuff going on. So at the again, it's my stoso. My stoso is majestic. And you, F dash P means loud the first time, second, uh, soft the second time. So we're going to start out loud, but this this is for the melody. The left hand's got to stay under it, so it's here. going to be soft. That's the melody that's soft, so the left hand's really soft. And going on, we're medium loud here. Crescendo up to loud. And the last line we're loud. And repeat that. retardando on the end. I think that's just normal for this type of music. You put a retard on. This is broke music. Look at the dates for the composer when they lived and this is really old music. 
Now, one thing about these little short drills like they've got, I always, I think, always, as near as I can remember it's always, use at least three fingers on these, not two. Uh, it depends on which finger, the situation as to which fingers. But in this case, in, in here, it would be a, a three, one, three, two. On that. I mean, I could do a three, two, three, one, but I've got a D coming up. So I'm going to do a, I'm going to end it, the trill with the second finger. And almost always, I'll use some combination of three fingers on a short trill. It's safer, especially if you get nervous, you have a better chance of getting them all in because when you get nervous, then you'll, the notes won't all play and uh, so I recommend the fingering on that trill, on both of these trills, is a three, one, three, two. And then for the last two notes is a one, two. And I recommend the one, two rather than one because they're quick. And it's safer to use two fingers on quick notes, repeated, like so.